Aloha, top of the morning, friends and family. Are you fighting shadows? Are you feeling despair? That was definitely the, me this morning, fighting back tears of despair. And I'm going to talk about why. I'm going to talk, give, you guys some, give you some resources that I've been working through, not just today, but this week. And before we go further in this video, we upload a beautifully edited masterpiece once a week to this channel. This one's uncut. And in today's Uncut video, I'm going to talk just about how I was this morning, how I am now, and just give you a, uh, a thing. You know, I also got these things here that I'm going to talk about in just a moment and uh, want to give to you one of these and also share with you a resource I've got here as well as another resource podcast I was listening to today. Um, so... As I was thinking about what video I was going to make this week for the uncut video, I was going through lots of different things, I guess. Um, and I don't want to make it seem shallow. And there's a, there's a number of things I don't want to communicate in this video. But the one thing that I do want to communicate in this video is that there's hope, there's mosquitoes, and, and just to encourage anybody, to encourage you, to give you a small bit of encouragement, resources, and just if anything I say while I'm kind of rambling on this uncut video has an effect, has a positive effect on you, makes something click for you that, that you needed, that's, that's my prayer for this video is that that is something that happens for you. Because, um, again, this morning I was, I was not doing so hot, and I'll talk about why, and why I think, and, and the conclusions I came to as the day went on and I processed through it as well as what I think are going to be solutions. Because um, again, this morning, yeah, I, I just woke up feeling not well, mentally, emotionally, spiritually. Um, and I thought that getting some coffee would fix that. I was like, oh, if I just get some coffee, I'll, I'll get through this. And then the, the coffee just took it and amplified it to where I literally spent a good amount of the morning just like fighting back tears of despair, which seemed crazy and still seems crazy for me to admit considering that we're just coming off of Memorial Day weekend and I, I'm thinking about folks that have laid their lives down for the life that I get to live. You know, it's something I can't help but reflect on this past weekend and made my, my tears of despair that I was fighting back seem that much more ridiculous. And I think that's part of how those things work. Like, It's, it started a few days ago from a very seemingly shallow place about views on YouTube, which is an effect. And I do work really hard on this channel, have worked hard for years, for the last almost 10 years to build what I've been able to build here. And so when I do see numbers that are absolutely pathetic, then I can't help but be like, what? What? Really? Like 200 views in a whole day? When I have 41,000 subscribers, it's such a small percentage to make me think this conspiracy bubble of my videos aren't being shared. And then I, I got this um, message from somebody on Instagram, and the message said this, and this is somebody who's been to sub subscribe to my channel for years, year, long enough to not realize that I had four kids now. Um, she said, I, I haven't seen Cusco and Cuts in a while or any vlogs from you lately. I miss them. Are you done? <laughs> I was like, to which I replied, I've never stopped, which I, I haven't. I've consistently uploaded videos here, and it just maybe it didn't help my conspiracy brain that says that YouTube doesn't show videos to my subscribers because literally one of my subscribers saying they thought I had quit. So there's that. Um, and this, again, just a small, it was kind of like a little tidbit to what got me rolling down this road of, of despair. And that was just like the trigger point, I guess. Because I do admit that I've been stubborn in my willingness to not include my children in my channel, which I know has an effect, and it has for years now. I don't know if you guys remember, um, Miguel over at Always Evolving Pythons made a video years back, years back now, where he like took his daughter and put a bag over her head so that it wouldn't affect his video, having one of his kids in the video. It's a thing, and it's unfortunate, and I know it, and I know that if I want to combat that, one of the solutions is to not have my children in the videos. <sighs> But I just can't bring myself to do that, even though 
one of my responsibilities here as a content creator is to make sure that I am getting good views and that my sponsors, especially like my new, newer sponsors, any sponsors, anybody who is a brand that works with this channel, um, that they're not wasting their resources on me. So I feel like I have those responsibilities there. And again, this is going to go, this is going to go way deeper than views on YouTube. This was just the trigger point. This was not, this is not the ultimate reason for my despair. It was just a spot to kind of start ticking me down that road. Um, so I'd like to take full responsibility for my suckfulness on YouTube when it comes to how well I've played the algorithm or, or how well I've crafted thumbnails and whatnot. Even if I do have kids in my videos and that plays a role, like just my, 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 my lack of expertise or my lack of creativity or lack of something, clearly something for the last two videos in particular um, to not get the performance out of this channel that I think I should be able to get if I actually do it right or well. So I do take full responsibility for that. I, I don't, as much as my conspiratorial brain wants to think it's some kind of thing because of kids in the videos, I'm fully ready to accept that it's not that at all and that my videos have just sucked lately, which doesn't make it any harder, any easier to accept because I've actually put a lot of work into them. Even just that last video, this past weekend's video where we're chasing down some newts, I was like, oh cool, I think it, you know there's good information in there about the newts about like things to avoid, um, about you know just just cool stuff. It's really cool cinematography. I thought it was quick, concise story, like not 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 dragging on too long about this and that. Even though I should realize that my best performing videos on YouTube have always been when I just sit down in front of the camera and talk and hardly put any work to them at all, other than like finding a nice place to sorry about that finding a nice place to share with you. Um, so anyway. <sighs> One of the points of despair is when I got to a spot like this, you know, like I was today where I'm thinking like, what, do I, what am I gonna do here? I would always reach out to Brian Barczyk. He was my, he is my mentor, my, like my friend, the guy that inspired me to start making YouTube videos in the first place all those years ago. And it was amazing to have him because he knew he would know exactly where I was at, not just because, well, yes, because of his experience. Because he literally knew exactly what it was I was going through. And he also was one of those guys that, was fighting that shadow, finding that demon of like, that was always telling him that no matter how hard you work, no matter what you put into it, it's not gonna be good enough. And those demons and shadows are realized for me when I don't see the views that I expect that I should get out of video that I put so much hard work into. So missing him added into that. I don't know if you can see the bug on this screen, but <laughs> sorry, bug. Uh, I just was really missing that this week. That, that resource that he was for me to somebody to talk to, you know, to reach out on the phone and, and speak with. Um, it's another reason that the, the despair seems so ri ridiculous. Like, you know, as, as I was fighting back those tears this morning, I was like shaking my head. Like, what is wrong with you? Like, there's so many people. I've got such a wide variety of people I can reach out to, and I did. And that's one of the resources I would definitely recommend to you if you're going through this is like somebody around, there's somebody around you somewhere that you can talk to. And that, is going to help you immensely. Just talking about whatever it is that you think is getting you down, whatever it is that you think is making you get to this place of despair, sharing that with somebody else is one of the most important things you can do. I, I as a man, tend to want to try and bottle it up. And even sharing it here on the video is helpful for me and hopefully helpful for you. Um, but just not keeping it bottled up. That's the worst thing you can do is take that and seal it off from the rest of the world and let it fester inside of you. That's, that, you do not want to do that. That is the last thing you want to do. There are resources out there for you. If you don't know somebody personally, there are people that you can talk to. And so please do that. I mean, that was a huge part of my day today that, that, that was between my wife and my sister and having those conversations and just being able to process through stuff, which got me to a deeper spot where I realized, no, it's not just because I'm not getting the results from the work I'm putting in that I think I should be getting. It's so much deeper than that for me than, than something that could be as shallow as that. So, um, you know, again, the, the despair that I felt, I was like in contrast, like I've got this beautiful family doing pretty well, even though it recently, like it seems every time one door closes and another one does open, then another one closes right behind it. And it's been kind of frustrating to you watch that bank account just like stay just low enough that you're still getting charged your savings account and not not i haven't added to it in you know the last couple of years um 
and having it that balance that's not clearing the feed or you're still getting a charge of fee every month, stuff like that, it, it can get to you. But in contrast to like places where I've been, you know, where there's addiction, like I've shared with you before, uh, of true real hard addictions or, you know, being in prison, like compared to those situations, like things are pretty good, you know, it's like what, which makes me shake my head even harder as I'm fighting the tears of, of that is like, wh why? Like, dude, you've been through so much seemingly rougher stuff than this. So why, you know? Um, and I was even working, you know, I was working in the moment. You know, I, I want to keep sponsors happy. I want, want to make sure I'm doing well there. It's, it has been the busiest time of my life, and I knew it was coming. These two weeks are probably the busiest time that I will ever have. Just carving out this time to come down to the creek here and, sh and film this uncut video real quick was just like, was a carved out piece of time that I just fit in, kind of, into my schedule, but I know it's important to do it, obviously. And what audacity did I have to come down and sit in this spot and not think that the mosquitoes were going to start swarming me immediately. Um, so, you know, I'm not making it up. I never like to make things up, but... Oh, of course, he flew off right as it went out of focus. All right, mosquito, just die. <laughs> um... <clears throat> Lost my train of thought. <sighs> Even though I was feeling that despair, I was like, you know what? I'm just going to push through. I'm just going to start working. I'm going to get work done. I'm going to work cleaning the animals, cleaning the house, making sure it's, it's good because that's something that can drag me down is when things are messy and things aren't in order. So I, I'm working on that. And even knowing in my head and repeating in my head, you know, a job well done is its own reward. And like believing that, and yet still like struggling out of to not feel this weight that was seemed to be crushing down upon me. Um, then I talked to Hillary and she asked me a question, which was, what's the first thing that comes to your mind? What is the thing that you're struggling with the most right now? What is that? And it came back to something I have been struggling with for a long time and I've shared with you before, which again is another one of those things where it, when I think about it and when I think about even talking about it, it seems ridiculous to bring it up because it's so minor in contrast with all of the problems I know exist out there for people, all the problems I've been through, you know, but it's, it's diet. I, and I haven't been doing well with it, you know, and I've been struggling with it. I've been praying about it. I've been on my knees in the snake room, weeping and begging to have this like addiction to sugar taken from me because I can see it tearing at every little part of my, my life which is why I found it so hilarious that in this book, which I highly encourage you to check out if you are not, um, if you haven't already, or if you don't know about this book, um, it's a book I'm going through. I'm about one third of the way through it. And it's very good. And it's been very helpful to process and, and set ideas in my head into motion. This is the, one of the resources here that I'm hoping that you will use if you are somebody who is fighting shadows, because I mean, it's an appropriately titled book and Gosh, it's really geared towards men. I don't. Th I think that women could definitely um, use some of the stuff in here, but it's it's definitely geared towards men. Just just so you know. But there's one spot in it. It's just a, a sentence out of the, out of the um, book. But I thought it was hilarious because it gives you this encouragement to create whimsy moments. Try creating one whimsy moment a day. Completely spontaneous, fun kind of moment. Something that gets you in touch with a sense of wonder. And this includes things like <laughs> jumping in the car and going for ice cream late at night, which also happens to be probably one of my biggest struggles when it comes to um, maintaining my health. <laughs> so I, thought that was, I thought that was hilarious. Anyway, there's that book, and if you were struggling with something like that, like me, because it's, it's everywhere. Sugar's everywhere, and if you're like me, it's, it's actually a problem um, that it has been affecting me. Even though I went for a run today, I went for a run yesterday, and still, like, all that gets counteracted by a late night run to get ice cream while everybody's sleeping. And um, one of the only solutions I could come up with that I thought would actually work is like going off into the mountains in the wilderness and resetting my whole gut biome for like 10 days. But I just, I'm too busy. I don't, there's no, there's not really a chance for me to do that right now, which I'm okay with. So I'm going to try other things, but I know that that would work. That's one thing I know would work. The struggle is I don't have the time to leave for 10 days and just go off the grid like that and would not be fair to my family. Um, 
you know, my wife needs support, so I, I can't be doing that. But Hillary shared this with me, this podcast, and I'm only halfway through it, but the information, and I think that's one of the number one, number one ways, like, like prayer, obviously, but information um, is power as well. And this podcast, I'll just put a link right here if you're somebody that, that is interested in checking this out or if you're somebody that's struggling like I am with this and it's actually affecting your life in a, in a way that I hear you and you're not ridiculous, you're not silly, it's, it's a real thing. And it can be one of the hardest things to deal with, especially since it's available everywhere, always. Huberman Lab, controlling sugar cravings and metabolism with science-based tools. Only halfway through it and already the information there and like its relation to dopamine, which is one of the other huge pitfalls that can lead to your own despair is like how much you need that next dopamine hit and how that can, and that, although dopamine is a good thing and it's wired into us for a good reason, it can also be our downfall, whether that's screens, social media, anything, like anything that gives you that little hit and you're finding unhealthy ways to get that dopamine high again. You know, there's so many different ways out there. Keeping that balanced and understanding it, I'm only halfway through, but just understanding the basic functions of how it works biologically and, and learning that and getting to know these little tools of how to take those moments and turn them around and not get trapped up and not let them suck you down into those moments that are going to lead you to despair. Um, including, of course, talking with people as the first thing I mentioned, talking with somebody. Um, so that's my encouragement to you today, that if you are fighting those shadows, if you are feeling that despair, that you're not alone and that there are ways to get out of it and you're not, you're not stuck. As stuck as you might feel, as, as overwhelming as it may seem, it's not going to last. And you'll get through it. Okay, one cut in the video. I totally forgot that I was going to share this with you guys and I ended the video too soon, prematurely. But if you know about the relationship between Brian Barczyk and I, in fact, when I was talking about Brian, probably the ideal time to bring this up, um, Robin over at Redline made these and just a, a limited run of them. There's all, I've just basically what exists in this bag right here is, is how many of these there are. And if you know the significance of that right there, as it pertains to myself and Brian. Um, I want you to have one. And at the risk that I thought I would do, initially I thought I'd just, you know, comment below and I'll send you one. I'm not going to do that to myself. I know that I will become overwhelmed with having to send out a bunch of these in the mail really quickly, especially in these next couple weeks. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring them with me to every reptile show that I'm going to until they're gone and I'll bring them with me. And if you want one, just tell me why and tell me the significance and it's yours. I'll be at the LA Pet Fair coming up, that huge show that Rami's putting on for the Reptile Super Show that includes the Bird Super Show and Plant Super Show and Fish Super, all the, that, that amazing show is happening at the end of next month. Um, I'll most likely be at the Anaheim show as well. I will definitely be at the Daytona Reptile Show in August. I will be at the Denver All-American Reptile and Plant Expo, that same one I was just at in September, the next one they're having, the second one they're putting on ever. I will be there at that one. I will be at the show they're putting on in October in North Carolina. I will also definitely be at October Tinley, of course. So these are all shows where I will be bringing these as long as they last. And if you want one, if, you, if it's going to be special to you, I want you to have it. All right. Sorry, I forgot before ending the video, but that's it. Take care. Aloha.